You're coming with me. I'll not leave you here. I've got to save you. Already? Yeah. You were right. You were right about me. Tell your sister. You were right. I won't leave you. Anakin Skywalker is known to us as the Chosen One, but through some theory making and a lot of time thinking about Star Wars, the thought occurred to me that maybe Anakin truly hasn't reached the prophecy yet, and that maybe, just maybe, there's a mystery that lies much deeper than we all realize. Guys, welcome back to today's video. Before we start, definitely share this video and drop a like. I love you all, let's get started. Thought came to me as I was actually creating my theory video about Balin Abeloth and the Stargazers, where I pondered the ancient connection that links Balin to the Stargazers that existed on Tython 25,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. As I watched over the old clips to gain my bearings, I certainly went over footage from the Ahsoka series. And while I watched some key moments back, I thought it was endearing to see Anakin be the focal point of Ahsoka's journey to Peridia, training vlogs, his appearance in the world between worlds, and also his force ghost appearing on Peridia. And even deeper thoughts ensued and plagued my mind all over again. Why is Anakin appearing to Ahsoka now as a force ghost? Why is Lucasfilm bringing him back into the fold in such a strong way story-wise? And why is the character guiding Ahsoka now years after he turned back to the light after destroying Palpatine? Embark with me on this crazy theory as we speculate on Anakin's new journey with Ahsoka and how he may have not fulfilled the prophecy of the Chosen One after all. Anakin has long been billed as the Chosen One. For his birth, it can be argued that Plagueis actually created Anakin. For those of you who don't know, Anakin was coincidentally immaculately conceived around the time Plagueis was experimenting with creating life, and so his fortune continues to play out leading him to this mediocre rise. So let's set the table here and state the obvious. What leads us to believe that Anakin fulfilled his prophecy? Well, as we all know, Anakin ultimately fulfills the prophecy of bringing balance to the Force by defeating Palpatine during the Return of the Jedi. He was almost prevented in doing so when he falls prey to the temptation set forth by the Emperor but is ultimately guided back towards the light by his son, Luke, who sees the good in him. I've accepted the truth that you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. That name no longer has any meaning for me. It is the name of your true self you've only forgotten. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. That was why you couldn't destroy me. That's why you won't bring me to your Emperor now. Now hold that quote in your mind, because it's going to be very important for the remainder of this theory. Before extrapolating that quote, let's take a look at the new canon reasons as to why Anakin did not fulfill the prophecy or bring balance. And the number one is quite obvious. Palpatine never died. His essence lived on as we see him return during the Rise of Skywalker. And in that regard, balance was never brought back, and we can't even argue that balance was restored for a short time. In fact, I would go on to say that balance also revolves around things outside of the Force itself. The Force embodies things outside of conventional Force pushes and lightsaber swings, so I think further evidence could be seen along the selfish dark side actors, as well as some extreme devotees of the Empire remaining left all over. So yes, these are basic reasons as to why the prophecy has not been fulfilled, but again, let's go back to the quote from Luke. Luke always senses some good in Vader, but he's never so certain in that he's guaranteeing Vader will turn to the light. And while that fire burns, even in his darkest moments where Luke voluntarily went to confront the Emperor, Luke was still taking a chance on faith, if anything, because failure was always present. So what happens internally to Vader upon him becoming Anakin again? Well, the obvious. He's passed on and moved on to another realm. And this is where things become more interesting. Vader reverts to his old form of Anakin Skywalker around the time of Return of the Jedi, and that version of Anakin is assumed to be the what if Anakin stayed in the light side version. Now this is where the theory really takes off on us. I rewatched Anakin and the World Between Worlds during the Ahsoka show, and we see both sides of Anakin, light and dark, or for argument's sake, all sides. We see shades of him being a teacher, a leader, and even the mass murderer that he once was. And it got me thinking, what if Anakin is simply a whole entire being being broken down into emotional compartments, all of which need healing. 
and hang with me here because it gets good and this is where I need your input in the comments below. In my opinion, I think Anakin is purposely broken down into some significant different segments and I think these are the most important ones to focus on for this theory. Those segments to me are the regret in relationships, the void of parentage, and temptation. And as we start to divide Anakin into these different complexes, try to think of him in an overarching sense, even his time with Vader, but pay most attention to Anakin as he appears to Ahsoka. Historically, Anakin does have significant regret in his relationships. To name some of the few, I am sure he regrets his actions towards Obi-Wan, but his biggest regret undoubtedly comes in two forms. How he destroyed his relationship with Padme, and living with the fact that he'll never be able to see her again as himself pre-Vader. This is possibly and solely the largest factor in driving him towards the dark side. Secondly, his largest regret must be missing out on raising his children. Interestingly enough, by the time of Return of the Jedi, Vader doesn't know that Luke has a sister, though I'm sure he always had some inkling of an idea. And maybe that's how the story was intended to be written. But I think the reason why Vader also decided to turn away from Palpatine was to not only save his son, but also to save his daughter. Because remember, it was only a few minutes before Vader confirms with Luke that Leia is indeed his daughter. Admittedly, there are more relationships that I'm sure you can think of, but these two are the most important ones to keep in mind for the time being in this theory. Stay with me, Mom. Everything. I. I love. The Jedi purposely removed Jedi from families at young ages to prevent them from forming attachments. For Anakin, things are different, as he was removed far too late from his mother. And though the Jedi did not want to authorize his training, they were later convinced to do so. And what's most disturbing for Anakin are the dreams he has of his mother. He expressed a longing for his mother throughout the time growing up in the temple, and upon sensing his mother's pain and foreseeing her death in visions, that torment drives him home only to find that his vision came true. Shmi Skywalker's death ultimately brings Anakin closer to the dark side and is arguably the beginning of the end for Skywalker himself. This void of parentage is crucial, not only because he lost his mother and failed to prevent his worst nightmares from coming true, but Anakin is also devoid of a father. And as we all know, it's made very clear to us during the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones that Obi-Wan is but a brother, and the person who is to be his father dies in Qui-Gon Jinn. I thought not. Another story the Jedi would tell you. It's a Sith legend. Darth Plagueis was a dark lord of the Sith, so powerful and so wise, he could use the Force to influence the midi-chlorians to create life. He had such a knowledge of the dark side, he could even keep the ones he cared about from dying. Temptation overall has a long history and themes across all mediums in our world and the world of Star Wars. And that theme of temptation is also ever present in the Star Wars universe, especially as it pertains to Anakin. Temptation for Anakin too is also directly tied to his regrets and that into the void of parentage. In his story, Anakin, often comes to grips of breaking the Jedi Code, and this ultimately culminates with pursuing his relationship with Padme. His greatest temptation, along with the lack of wisdom, maturity, and the ability to realize that he cannot have everything he wants, well, it's a theme that perhaps never really leaves his side. So looking back on that crucial scene when Vader is redeemed by Luke, I think we can put into motion a theory where Anakin is not really truly healed at that point. And why is that important? Well, look, in Star Wars and in life, no one is ever really perfect. But Anakin, on the other hand, is a person thrust into an imperfect situation with poor guidance, trying to become the perfect person making the best decisions. So this is why he fails. And even though he has redemption, that redemption doesn't necessarily mean 
that he's achieved the growth and become the most complete form of himself. And this is where our theory truly shines. Anakin is only healed in part. So where is he healed? Well, when it comes down to it, I think Anakin is certainly healed when talking about his relationship with Padme. And I believe this because it was the temptation and regret of losing Padme that drove Anakin into Vader and drives Vader into the darkest recesses of his person. From the time of Padme's death and birth of his children, Anakin leads this life of pain and regret, but not without moments of deep reflection. Through this torment, which essentially spends 23 years, Vader certainly undergoes a path back to the light. And his path to the light, the rejection of his dark master in Palpatine, the acceptance of Padme's end, and the realization of his children from Padme ultimately lead him to becoming Anakin again. And in becoming Anakin again, the cycle of regret, temptation, and pain as it pertains to Padme and his children have been healed, especially because Luke is accepting of Vader's turn back to Anakin, and because Luke does not reject Anakin once he is turned back to the light. And though I would argue the pain of losing Padme and never raising his children detail a large portion of why Vader becomes Vader, there's still another part of him which is not healed, and that piece of Vader still exists within Anakin. And you may say to yourself, well, Anakin transcended the Force and returned as a Force ghost. He's got to be good. Well, yeah, he can be a good person, but it doesn't mean that he's fully embraced the light side or that he is an embodiment of the light. And a good example of this is when Qui-Gon Jinn, who is not evil, certainly rejects a lot of principles of the Jedi and returns as a Force ghost himself. So where exactly does Anakin still maintain this darkness or pieces of Vader that prevent him ultimately bringing this balance of the Force? Well, like previously stated, when creating this theory, I spent a lot of time wondering why Anakin appeared on Mortis and in the world between worlds. It seems all too coincidental that he would appear years after his death, and it certainly seems very well timed now that Ahsoka embarks on a journey that may entail the Mortis gods, especially since that was the significant journey Anakin, Ahsoka, and Obi-Wan went on together, and it is one where Anakin discovered his true future, though being mind wiped after. Can't do it. Honey. I ever see you again? What does your heart tell you? I hope so. Yes. I guess. Then we will see each other again. When looking at Anakin's character, another significant piece of his person that was never healed came from the facet of his character dealing with the void of parentage as mentioned before. Anakin is only briefly raised by his mother and in that time develops a strong attachment to her. In essence, Anakin is never really healed from being a slave, who was in essence sort of abducted by the Jedi and not allowed to see his mother again until her death, where he gives into the temptation of his dream and goes to see her in her final moments. And we can tell Anakin is certainly still haunted by the death of his mother, as detailed in the Vader comic series. Now, hold this thought on your mind. Anakin is reappearing as a force ghost on Peridia where there's a strong chance that Abeloth is potentially calling to Balin, who is being chased down by Ahsoka and now in turn Anakin. And a quick recap on Abeloth. Abeloth is essentially the mother to the son and the daughter of Mortis, who represents the light and the dark, and is in essence wife to the father. The mother was born a mortal, but becomes Abeloth when in her aging days essentially bathes and drinks from the immortal elixirs that belong to her children. In giving in to this temptation for fear of losing her family in death, Abeloth becomes a god, albeit a destructive one. Those core themes of Abeloth line up very closely with Anakin. Abeloth seeks to restore her family by finding a new son and a new daughter. And historically, Abeloth has been known to call out to those who are certainly in pain or seeking some sort of resolution that in turn would free her. Likewise, it's still possible that Anakin is being called upon by Abeloth, or that Anakin is still tempted to see his mother again. Hence, going on this journey with Ahsoka to try to find Balin's skull, who is in essence also following the call of Abeloth, or the Mortis gods. Perhaps Anakin is also tempted by the mother, who promises to give Anakin the chance to see his mother again, or is plotting to become Anakin's mother in a sense. In truth though, Anakin could also be attempting to find Abeloth, to put Abeloth down once and for all. And perhaps that is truly how he'll bring balance to the Force in essence also restoring a new form to the Mortis gods. Anakin the son, Ahsoka the daughter, restoring the balance of light and dark. 
So throughout this analysis, we've delved deep into the character of Anakin Skywalker and explored the idea that his journey as the Chosen One may not have been fully realized. We talked about the three key aspects of Anakin's character, the regrets and relationships, the void of parentage he experiences, and the persistent temptation he faces. Each of those elements contribute to a complex portrait of a character struggling with turmoil and unresolved conflict. From his regrets and actions towards Obi-Wan, to his profound sorrow over the loss of Padme, and the inability to raise his children, Anakin's relationships are fraught with pain and longing. We propose that Anakin's journey might involve confronting these unresolved issues, potentially through his interactions with entities like Abeloth and the Mortis Gods. And while his redemption and Return of the Jedi makes a significant turning point, it's very possible that Anakin's path to true balance and fulfillment is still ongoing, and it's one that I'd like to explore more. And considering Anakin's continued presence as a Force Ghost and his potential involvement in Ahsoka's journey, we're left with a tantalizing question about the nature of his quest and the role he might play in shaping the future of the galaxy. As we await further developments in the Star Wars saga, it's clear that Anakin Skywalker remains one of the most compelling figures, with a story that continues to captivate audiences and build upon its own self. Overall, I think it's a very interesting theory that pertains to Anakin embarking on a journey to truly find himself. Whether he gives into these temptations or simply seeks a way to remedy the inner portrait of himself remains to be seen. And again, those questions are truly worth asking as Anakin still remains the most compelling Star Wars character who now appears on track to become or engage with divinity in Abeloth, the Father of the Sun, the Mortis Gods, and whoever new Celestials will appear. So I really want to know, do you think Anakin has yet to fulfill his prophecy and has only done so partly? And if so, could this journey to Abeloth be the make or break in his pursuit of truly healing himself? Or is Anakin just getting too close to the darkness again? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to like this video and share this video with a friend. Likes and shares for me are the most important metric when I think about long-term content and producing it for the channel. And it's certainly something I like to keep on producing for you guys, because I love Star Wars theories and I love making long-form content. Well, until next time everyone, make sure to always take care of your inner self, and may the force be with you, always.